Good morning class. Today we are going to introduce how to use the neonatal videos. We will learn about when to apply the neonatal resuscitation guidelines. This first set of videos is to introduce you to how to distinguish the work of breathing of the baby, the heart rate, and the respiratory rate. This first video shows the baby breathing with a normal respiratory rate of about 60 breaths per minute. Note that the work of breathing is normal. There is a little nasal flaring with the abdomen moving outward followed by the outward movement of the chest. This next video demonstrates a video showing a baby with high work of breathing. Note that there is pronounced nasal flaring, sternal and tracheal and drawn. The abdomen is moving outward but there is isn't drawing of the chest. This movement of the abdomen moving out and the chest drawing inward is no as paradoxical breathing. This baby is demonstrating a high work of breathing. This next video is part of a series of videos that will help us learn to quickly determine the heart rate and respiratory rate of the babies. It is not critical that you determine the exact heart rate and respiratory rate, but to delineate these elements. Is the heart rate greater or less than 100 beats per minute? Is it accelerating or getting faster, or is it getting slower? The other critical heart rate is 60 beats per minute. It is important that you can learn to quickly and efficiently determine if the heart rate is greater or less than 60 beats per minute. The videos will demonstrate and give us two methods of determining the heart rate. The first is by auscultation, where you can hear the heart beat. The second method is by using a finger tap, to indicate the heart rate. This is done when other resuscitator is listening to the heart rate and indicating with the finger tap. The respiratory rate is important to assess as well. Note that the respiratory rate of about 40 to 60 is normal, but more important is how much work the baby is doing to breathe and what the heart rate is at the same time. Now let us watch a couple of the short clips and then let me know what you think. This first clip you can hear the heart rate. This second clip you can see the finger tapping the heart rate. Excuse me. I can't see how it would be possible to count that fast heart rate and the respiratory rate. That is the problem exactly. That is why we are using this series of videos is so we can learn how to do determine the heart rate quickly and efficiently. It will take some time to learn how to do this. Watch the videos carefully and count the heart rates for the 30 seconds of the video and then multiply it by 2. Okay, I can see how to do that. I guess you would do the same for the respiratory rate. Exactly. Now it will take some practice before you can quickly determine if the heart rate is above 100 beats per minute. Or is the heart rate less than 100 and greater than 60 beats per minute or less than 60 beats per minute? But if you watch the videos a few times you will quickly learn how to estimate the heart rate quickly. One of the things that will make it a little easier is that there is an answer key for each of the published videos so that you can check to make sure your estimations of the heart rate and respiratory rate are accurate. Now remember that when practicing at the bedside, during an actual neonatal resuscitation, you will need to be able to assess the baby quickly. These videos will let you practice and develop your assessment skills before you are working with real babies. Now this next series of videos will give you practice in determining when positive pressure ventilation or constant positive pressure assistance is required to help the baby breathe. Firstly let us watch an example video. In this video the baby was breathing while being stimulated by the resuscitation team. After stimulation the baby's heart rate is initially greater than 100 but note that the work of breathing of the baby is high. Soon after the stimulation is stopped the heart rate begins to slow. Once the heart rate starts to slow and approaches 100 beats per minute we should begin assisting the baby with positive pressure ventilation. Wow, that assessment and deciding the need for assisted breathing happens very quickly. Yes it does. We need to stimulate for 30 seconds. Then within another 30 seconds decide what actions is required. The neonatal resuscitation guidelines will help us determine the correct actions. These videos will give you an opportunity to practice making those decisions. The main actions you will need to decide include, just monitoring the baby closely, 
provide constant positive airway pressures to help decrease the baby's work of breathing, or you may need to provide positive pressure ventilation to take over the work of breathing for the baby and to stabilize the baby's heart rate. The lack of effective ventilation is the primary cause of a low heart rate in a baby. This last example video allows us to learn how to judge the effectiveness of the positive pressure breaths being delivered to the baby. This is also an important skill that we will be practicing in the lab. The critical elements here are to watch for chest rise, to monitor the heart rate, and to also watch the pressure manometer of the delivered breaths. That is an awful lot of things to monitor and watch simultaneously. How can you ever learn to do that? That is why we are going to review the neonatal resuscitation guidelines and then use these videos as a source of practice. After watching them a few times and reading the observatons and the answer keys to the videos we will learn how to do this effectively. Okay let us watch an example video. In this video we see that the baby is being ventilated with positive pressure ventilation at a rate of about 60 breaths per minute. Note that the chest is rising with each breath, so it looks to be effective. The pressures though are not very precise and very dramatically. They are not achieving the desired or set pressures of 20 over 5. Like they should. This suggests that the resuscitator, the person doing the positive pressure breaths, does not have a good seal with the mask and the breaths are ineffective. Note as time goes on the baby's heart rate starts to slow and is dipping below the needed 100 beats per minute. When you look in your neonatal resuscitation handbook it will guide you to perform the required steps to improve ventilation. It is called Mr. Sopa. You will learn them from the manual and we will practice them in the lab. These videos will provide you with a series of situations where you will need to decide what the critical problem is and the best course of action to take to correct the problem. Study your neonatal resuscitation manual and the neonatal resuscitation algorithms. Then watch the linked videos from the worksheets. Follow the instructions on the worksheets and then review your thoughts and compare them to the published answer key for each of the video segments. The exercise sheets will guide you to watch each of these videos, where you will be given an opportunity to practice making important decisions with regards to the neonatal resuscitation scenarios. Remember that these are simulations of common problems encountered when performing neonatal resuscitations. Wow, that seems like a lot of work and videos to watch. I know that this takes some considerable effort to learn and master but if you want to be able to be effective neonatal resuscitators and to make effective use of your lab time these are good exercises to practice and learn from. We will take some time in classes over the next weeks to help you with any questions you may have. Remember to read that neonatal resuscitation manual and then watch these videos. Thank you and I will see you all next week.